feature presentation. Uh, Keenan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Hi, Eric. Good to see you. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you, it's been nearly 40 years since the 1986 animated feature traumatized a generation of film goers <laughs> yeah. and the response to Optimus Prime uh, and his demise in, in that production also changed Duke's fate in the G.I. Joe movie, not to mention how many still hold that original film up in such high regard, even comparing that to the live action adaptations. What were your initial thoughts on the Transformers one script? And were there any traumatizing movie moments like Optimus Prime dying when you were a kid that have stayed with you ever since? Uh, well, I will, I'll, I'll say that the, 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 I was thrilled, I was really thrilled and excited when I read the Transformers one script because I am, I am a sucker for an origin story, especially in an, especially in a world when there's been so much world building over these last few, it's been almost two decades since that first, that first Transformers live action film. And like you said, 40 years since the animated film. So we've, we've been living with these characters for such a long time. To be able to see their origin story is something that I think we didn't even know we needed, but we do need. Is, is, and, and the way it's being told, the, the fact that we're, that, that we're gonna do what I love, this is one of my favorite tropes, is that twist of friends, friends who break apart. And, uh, and, and so that to me was thrilling. I was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And um, especially in the deft hands of Josh Cooley, who I think did an amazing job directing Toy Story 4. I think Toy Story 4, in that pantheon of films, is, is one of the strongest entrants. Um, uh, the second question is, I am of just the right age that I sat in a movie theater when I was 10 and when I was 10 years old and you see Darth Vader reach out. I am of that age. I actually got to sit in a movie theater <laughs> and watch, uh, may we speak of James Earl Jones just for a moment, may he rest in peace, one of the, one of the greatest, right? To hear him utter those words, for him to say, I am your father, is like the most devastating moment I can think of in a movie, especially from my childhood. And I, it's so funny, whenever people talk about the 1986 Transformers movie, I have to remember that Optimus Prime dies in that movie. I blocked it out. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, I'm like, that's not real, that's not real. I'm just gonna go home and get my VHS tape and watch the cartoon at home on the show, because that's not real. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> You're creating your own narrative in, in that space, exactly. you know? It's, exactly. It's like I, I can't handle it. I couldn't but handle it's, it. It's, it's funny because this movie, I think, is also going to traumatize a generation of kids because there is some dark stuff in here, and even with your character. And I was, I was curious to know, did pacing play a role in terms of the speed of your performance, and were you thinking about things like isolation and loneliness for your character? It's funny, what I was doing mostly with my character was I wasn't thinking of, I, I wasn't spending as much time focusing on the isolation and loneliness as I was on making him as loquacious a character as possible. I, want, I, I, I was literally given an opportunity by Josh to take what is ostensibly a silent movie character. I mean, he's, he, he, is a, he is a mute. He, he, I, I think you can, Bumblebee, I mean, this may be, putting a little too fine a point on it, but I'm putting Bumblebee up there with, you know, Lloyd and Chaplin <laughs> and, and uh, Fatty Arbuckle. You, you know, he's, he's, he's one of our- And Buster Mr. Keaton, yeah. Buster Keaton, I can't believe I forgot Keaton. Um, he's one of, he, he falls into that category. So I thought, what a great juxtaposition to make him the most loquacious character in the film. So that was, I was focusing more on that than I was on the fact that he lives on sub-level 50 and he's all by himself. It's pretty dark, you're right. He's just been left down there to rot, or I'm sorry, to rust. <laughs> well, on that note, I have to roll out, but thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate <laughs> Thanks, it. And thank Great you for questions. mentioning James Earl Jones. Great actor, um, uh, great he was performer. Amazing. amazing, one of the greats. Take care. Thank you so much. You too.